Hey everyone, Steve here. DaVinci Resolve 20 public beta has been out for a few weeks now, and if you haven't checked out the new AI features, you really should. If you're a Final Cut Pro user like me, you might have some questions on how to move your Final Cut Pro projects into DaVinci Resolve. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that, and along the way, show you some of the issues you might run into and how to deal with them. Let's dive in. The project I'm using is a short promo I created for my friend Mitch and his aerial cinematography company, H5 Productions. It's a fairly simple edit one music track, some multicam clips, and a few connected storylines. But it's got just enough complexity to show you how Final Cut's magnetic timeline translates or sometimes doesn't translate into Resolve's track-based system. If you're a Final Cut Pro user, you already know that your dialogue is embedded in the primary storyline. Here the dialogue is associated with these multicam clips. When you expand a clip, you'll see each segment has its own audio component. Now here's something that can trip people up. Some connected clips, like this one, have multiple audio channels. Let's open it in the Audio Inspector. And there it is. Eight separate channels, all currently disabled. Final Cut Pro ignores these unless you enable them manually, but when you send the project to Resolve, all eight channels will show up as separate audio tracks regardless of whether they are enabled or not. That can get messy if you're not expecting it, so heads up. Next, let's talk about media location. In Final Cut Pro, media can be stored inside the library file itself. To check this, select the library and click Modify Settings. You'll see the media location listed at the top. Unless you change it, your media location will be the library itself. Now that's totally fine for Final Cut, but DaVinci Resolve doesn't use internal libraries. It always looks for media in standard file system locations. Meaning, if your media is buried inside a Final Cut library, Resolve might have trouble finding it. So, if you want a smoother transition, I recommend moving your media outside the library. You can do this by creating a new storage location, like a folder called Media, and then consolidating the media to that location. I've already done this ahead of time for this project, and it just keeps things cleaner and more manageable. Once you've got your media sorted, it's time to export your project for Resolve. With your timeline selected, go to the File menu, choose Export XML, and save the file. Make sure you're exporting using the latest XML version that Final Cut Pro 11 supports. I'll just drop it on the desktop. The next step is to import our project into Resolve. So I'm working in the public beta of DaVinci Resolve 20, and I've got to say, it's surprisingly stable. To start the import, I'll head up to the File menu, choose Import Timeline, and then select that XML file we exported from Final Cut Pro earlier. Once I click Import, we get the Load XML window. Now this window lets you tweak how the project is brought into Resolve. For the most part, you can leave the settings at their defaults. But there's one thing you do want to double check. Make sure the timeline resolution matches what you had in Final Cut. If that doesn't line up, you could end up with sizing issues. Also, if you added any quick color adjustments using Final Cut's color board, like shadows, midtones, or highlights, those will come over. But anything more advanced won't make it. So if you're planning to do your grading in Resolve, it's usually best to leave that option unchecked. Sometimes you'll get a little error message when importing, and 9 times out of 10, it's nothing. Just close it and move on. The real priority here is making sure nothing's offline. So that's the first thing I check. I go through the media pool and confirm that everything is online. Next, I want to make sure the clips are pointing to the right media files on my drive. I'll right-click on one of these clips and choose Reveal in Finder. Since I'm on a Mac, it takes me right to the external media folder I set up in Final Cut Pro. Everything's here and accounted for. Then I'll jump into the timeline and just scrub through it, listening closely to make sure everything came over correctly. It's important to listen to your edit in real time. Just assume I've already done that. Before we start editing in the timeline, I want to take a moment to clean up the workspace a bit. First, I'm going to close the media pool. Instead of using both viewers, I'm going to switch to just one. That frees up more screen space for what matters most, the timeline. Now, if you look down at the timeline, you'll notice there are a lot more audio tracks than we can see. So I'm going to drag the divider bar upward to give myself more room, and then use shift scroll on my mouse to see the full track stack. And yep, there they are. Tons of audio tracks. Most of these came over from Final Cut Pro whether I wanted them or not. So I'll show you how I go about cleaning up a timeline like this. First thing I'll do is mute the music track. It just gets in the way. Next, I want to find all my dialogue clips and get them onto a single track. Right now, they're scattered everywhere. Some are on audio track 3, 
and who knows where else. So here's what I do. I'll right-click in the track header area and choose Add Track Mono, since Dialog is mono. A new track appears, this one's labeled A2. Now I want to move all my dialog clips into this new track. But by default, Resolve links the video and audio clips together, which means if I delete either one, they both are removed. To get around that, I just hold Option on a Mac, or Alt on a PC, and then hold Shift to drag just the audio clip straight up into my dialog track. I'll do the same thing for the rest. Option click, then shift drag for the remaining linked dialog clips. Now all my dialog is neatly in one place. To make it easier to see at a glance, I'll also change the color of the dialog track. I'll right click the track header and choose blue to match the video. Next, it's time to remove any unnecessary audio. And this assumes you've already gone through the timeline to identify what can go. By default, when you click a video clip, its audio is selected too. But to speed this up, I'm going to click the Link Selection button. This temporarily disables that automatic linking. Now I can just click audio clips directly and delete them without affecting the video. Toward the end of my timeline, there's a whole bunch of audio tracks. Stuff like internal helicopter cabin recordings, ground control chatter, and I don't need any of that. I'll just select them all and hit delete. Already, the timeline's looking way cleaner. Now let's talk about secondary storylines. Final Cut uses these all the time. But DaVinci Resolve doesn't support magnetic timelines, so these come over as compound clips. The problem with compound clips is that if you try to trim them, you're limited by the clip boundaries. So I prefer to decompose them. Just right-click the clip and choose Decompose in Place using Clips Only. That breaks it open, and now you can work with the full original clips inside. I'll do the same for any other compound clips in the timeline. That gives me much more flexibility. Oh, and any audio that's tied to these compound clips? Yeah, I don't need it. Once I've cleared out what I don't need, I'm left with a bunch of empty audio tracks. No problem. I'll right-click in the track header and choose Delete Empty Tracks. Now my timeline is compact, clean, and easy to manage. To make things even easier, I'll increase the track height so I can actually see the waveforms. That's especially helpful when I need to find a specific line or moment. Like this one from Mitch, whose dialogue ended up way down in a lower track. I'll move that up into the dialogue track too. Finally, let's deal with sound effects. They're scattered all over the place right now. Some are useful, some aren't. So I'm going to mute both the dialogue and music, then scrub through the timeline and listen for sound effects. Once I find them, I want to move them into their own track. Before I do that, I'm going to shift the dialog up one level so it sits directly under the video track. Just a personal preference for visual clarity. Then I'll add a new stereo track, and that'll be my sound effects track. From here, I can start pulling all those sound effects clips into one place. Finally, I'll change the track color for these two effects tracks to make them easier to identify during the mixing stage. And that's my workflow for cleaning up a messy timeline in Resolve. Once you get used to these steps, it really speeds things up and makes the next phase, editing and mixing, way more manageable. So that about wraps it up. If this video helped you make the transition from Final Cut Pro to Resolve a little easier, do me a favor and give this video a like. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, run into snags, or just want to share how your workflow is doing, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for watching.